Okay, this is this is my recording of uh, the conversion of my Vixen F3J over to uh, an F5J Windy model. So um, I guess we'll just start at the front. The uh, spinner is a um, Hyperflight Vladimir models Hyper Spinner, 30 millimeters in diameter. And uh, the fuselage was cut half, whoops, sorry, there we go, half an inch from the canopy, 12 and a half mil. And uh, what else? 12 and a half mil. Um, I've got a Ryzen out gearbox and a Hyperion motor in there. I'll have a picture in the in the post somewhere. Um, I used I also used a um, a Hyperion sorry a Ryzen hour mount plate. I'd recommend that highly. It made it so much easier. It's actually twenty nine mil in diameter. But because the fuselage was actually oval shaped, uh, when I cut it, as soon as oh, let me let me take a step back here. So this is the nose that I cut off, and you can see there's a lip at the join, a bump on the join line. They use a joggle gasket, and you can go and search that if you really want to know what it is. But cut a long story short, if you grind that away to fit in the disc. You've got nothing joining the two halves together. So um, to facilitate the disc going in, I had to grind off grind off the, um, the join in here. And then in behind where the disc was going, where the firewall, if you want to call it that, was going, I, I put some um, Aramid, some Kevlar roving, some toes, just with CA across the join line to keep that um, integral and then I was able to fit the, um, the the firewall in without bursting open the hinge line here okay next step what else what else what else but yeah sorry recommend that the rising hour mount um, going backwards Got the ESC in there, the battery that's pretty much all pretty much similar. The Altus ESC there. Battery goes in here. This is a um, Spectrum 9310 receiver. So it's got three aerials. Oh that's right, the, the F3J is um, 2.4 friendly, so you can see just here the carbon starts, so it's fiberglass from there forward. So I've got two aerials. Uh, diagonally on the bottom corners and then one up in the roof here so that should give me some hopefully all-round signal uh, another thing I did this time that I, I just used tape when I was flying it as an F3J model a duration model but this time I wanted to really help make sure the canopy stayed on so I, I manufactured this out of G10 glued it in and it just fits in underneath underneath that lip there and then I've got a magnet sitting in the back hole and a piece of wire sitting in underneath that so I just hook it in under the front and then it just snaps into place at the back whether it holds or not I'm, I don't know yet I haven't flown the plane yet um, but we'll see okay so going back to the back end um, there's a bulkhead here, it's a carbon something laminated bulkhead with a couple of holes in it and I believe there's another one here and there may be more, I really don't know. Um, so at the back end I'll, I'll have other photographs of the V-tail setup but there's MKS DS65Ks in here and uh, I, what I wanted to do is originally I, I wanted to run the six wires each 
just for redundancy so that if I lost a, a solder joint or something or other that I'd still have one tail surface working. Um, as it turns out with those bulkheads in the fuselage, it, um, I actually had to take, take two wires and pull it through the hole where the push rod, the carbon, the original carbon push rod went. So two on that side and two on this side and then and sort the circuit out at, uh, at this end to, to split them up into two servos. So I've got the positive, negative and two signals. What else? Um, I had to put the servos in the back purely from a weight and balance. Knowing this plane was going to be over two kilos and it is, it's under 2.1 kilos. But knowing that it was going to be over two kilos, I knew it was going to require a fairly decent power plant. So um, the one that's in there now is 127 grams motor and gearbox. Uh, and I just put it on the balance and knew that I wanted a CG of around 105-ish. And then to, to get that 105, I, I had to put the servos up the back. Um, it just wasn't going to happen otherwise. Um, I would have been adding tail weight and, and that's, I mean, dead lead tail weight, you know, keeping the servos up the front was, was problematic in that um, when it was a 3J model, the, the actual push rods came out of here too narrow to sort of fit anything in between them. They were, they were offset from the side of the fuselage such that I couldn't fit a receiver in there, I couldn't fit a battery pack in between them or, or whatever. So it was just a waste of space and I really needed to keep as much weight as I could back. Um, so anyway, it just it just worked out that the few, the servos in the tail end, uh, now let me have a chat about that too, because I agonized for ages about where to put them. So, I ended up putting them right up against the root of the tailplane because there's a carbon joiner bar that comes out of the fuselage that's about that long, plus the tube assembly that, that um, receives the, the carbon rod. So I figured that's got to be the strongest part of the tailplane, so I'll just put it in behind there. This piece of carbon here, I put that in, that's on the inside, just to help any any skin buckling from any up elevator loads that might incur under any stress you know like losing sight of your model and regain, regaining sight of it when it's vertical that sort of stuff um, I just didn't want any buckling of the, the tail plane there and it didn't add a lot of weight um, yeah oh, there's other challenges that, that you've got to be aware of um, the original torque rods the original torque rods came up through here up through there along the hinge line and then bent 90 degrees and, and backwards. So I located my servos and then started opening up the hole here for the um, control horn and struck the metal wire going backwards and it would just created all sorts of issues. You can probably see how the skins deformed there as the metal got, got hot as I was trying to grind it out. Where is it? There it is. The metal got hot and it just uh, transferred the heat onto the epoxy. So, not pretty, but you know, it's not it's going to be fine. Yeah, the wing was unchanged. All of the changes occurred in the fuselage and tail. That's nine minutes. All right, um, I think. I originally put a, a, a full length plywood plate tray from the bulkhead forward to absorb any of the, um, the dork landings for you know, FAI landings. So now that we don't do that with F5J and I hope they don't bring it in, um, that's it's not as, not as stiff as it used to be, but it doesn't need to be, so. Okay, um, what else, what else? Motor, props. Rosnow, I'll probably get some GM props for that once I try it, once I fly it. Um, that is, I was pretty impressed with this actually. I over propped it originally and, and pulled 60 amps and 550 watts. And this thing barely got above room temperature, whereas the motor and the battery were just about sludge. Um, so 
very happy with the, the speedy. That's about it. Okay. Um, I think that's all. Just double checking. These are the batteries I'll be using. And it also fits the Turnergy Graphene 1000 milliamps. I think that's it. Okay, over and out.